In a series of previous videos with Professor Rashid Girawi and his PhD students, we discussed how the Bitcoin protocol was an overkill because the problem it needed to solve was actually easy in some mathematical sense. We also saw how to radically outperform Bitcoin, both in a setting with a limited number of users with deterministic safety guarantees and in a very large scale setting with very high probability guarantees. These more efficient alternative solutions have been dubbed Asynchronous Trustworthy Transfer or AT2 by Professor Gerawi and his collaborators. Today, we are going to discuss in more details what AT2 can and cannot do. And let's start with the positive answer. What can AT2 do? Very good question, also a very important one. Uh, we can do exactly what Nakamoto set out to do in his original white paper. We can implement cryptocurrencies. So decentralized algorithm that implements cash payments, basically. And crucially, the performances of AT2 are orders of magnitudes better than Bitcoin and current state-of-the-art alternatives. By narrowing down on this exact problem that, that was defined in that paper, we can actually obtain much more simpler solution, uh, more efficient, like my colleagues explained, and, uh, uh, with, and obtain higher performance. Let's discuss numbers in further details. So compared with, uh, with Bitcoin, the original protocol, uh, which, uh, as you recall, it takes up to one hour to confirm a, co uh, a transaction. Uh, in, uh, in our prototypes, we can achieve sub-second confirmation. If we compare it with the state-of-the-art consensus-based solution, we can achieve, in terms of throughput, for instance, uh, one order of magnitude uh, better. If we compare with the visa level tra transactions, which are uh, cited to be around 20,000 transactions per second, we can achieve the same order of magnitude. And perhaps more impressively, huge energy consumptions are no longer needed. In terms of energy efficiency, uh, so our algorithms, they are negligible in that regard. Uh, also, one other aspect that is important is that the solutions are uh, very simple in, uh, in their implementation. So. Uh, where uh, a consensus-based solution would require you to write, to, to write 10,000 lines of code, we would require an order of magnitude less, like 1,000 lines of code. It's much more simpler to express broadcast algorithms instead of expressing a consensus algorithm. And AT2 is actually not limited to cryptocurrencies. It's interesting to note that uh, this, these solutions, they don't just apply to cash transfers between two parties, but you can actually do generic kind of... Uh, uh, transfers uh, in terms of, for instance, you can, I can transfer you money and you can give me pizza, I can transfer you uh, my house and then you transfer the house to your, uh, to, your, uh, um, to your kids and so on. So it's very general, we call it token, we, we call it tokens, this, the, 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 the items that are being transferred and uh, basically they apply to everything that you can express in this manner, that you can like you can capture as a quantity. In fact, the key property of what can be done by AT2 is this kind of one-to-one -one transaction between a sender and a receiver. Yes, the, the key property is there is a spender, uh, there is a, there's the, the actor that spends, and then there's a beneficiary of the transaction, and there's a certain number of tokens being transferred from the spender to the beneficiary. Now, this may sound like a magic bullet to solve everything that the blockchain was trying to do with huge resources and bad performances, but it's not. Recall that the reason why AT2 outperforms Bitcoin is because it's narrowed it down to solving problems of consensus number one. And as a result, there are things that blockchain solves, but that AT2 does not. So what we cannot do is to implement a universal machine. As I was explaining before, uh, with regard to consensus numbers, we have consensus number one, which is the lowest universality possible. It is still sufficient to implement money transfer or any kind of asset transfers between accounts, but uh, we do not offer exactly the same services as a blockchain does. A blockchain having a consensus number infinity is a universal machine. It can do anything, any service. Let's give an example of what blockchain can do, but that AT2 cannot. It can uh, perform the so-called smart contracts, which are uh, often seen as the internet computer, where not only I transfer money to you kind of transactions can be, can be handled, but also any 
type of operations. For example, I give the money to you if the sun is shining tomorrow and if you perform some service to somebody else and if a disaster happens there and uh, if uh, if all this happens then then something else might be implied by this. So an arbitrary thing that is often called a smart contract we cannot do. We do transfers. But interestingly some smart contracts can be performed by a slight variant of 82. What uh, we still can do, and this is a generalization of our result, is that we can do some limited contracts between groups of people if these people are able to solve agreement among themselves. If we have a huge system, we can send money around without having to agree on anybody. And if we want to do something stronger than that, then if we, use, if we use a blockchain, everybody in the system would have to agree on everything. What we show is that if we have an operation that only involves a limited set of participants, let the set the size be k, if we have a group of k participants, they can do an arbitrary contract or an arbitrary operation if it involves only these k people and only those k people need to agree and this is brilliant, because getting a small number k of users to solve consensus is much easier than getting a billion of users to do so. And interestingly, even these k users do not need to trust one another. There are mechanisms for us to agree even if you don't trust each other. However, these are usually very expensive in terms of communication and computation, and they take a lot of time and effort for us to agree. And the nice thing is that uh, the bigger the system is, the much, the more expensive it is to agree, but if we are only a limited group of people, we only need to pay the price for agreement among ourselves and not for the whole system, which in a big, in a big system is completely prohibited. So let's sum it all up. All in all, uh, our, our journey in this, in this field basically teaches us that going back to the fundamentals of distributed com computing is very helpful. So by doing so, we could somehow better understand the original paper of Nakamoto and realize that the problem as stated is much easier than what many people believe. And uh, we came up with a couple of solutions that are currently uh, being prototyped and uh, we believe that they will be open sourced uh, pretty soon. Also, uh, something very important is an observation that we realize later is Nakamoto's paper is very smart and it's also very smart because it somehow combines uh, agreeing on the order according to which transactions should appear in the ledger and being a civil resistant. And in some way, what we did is decouple these two things and saying that we don't need ordering of transactions for that, we can have a weaker primitive to ensure ordering whenever it's necessary. And the civil resistance could be done by another mechanism that does not need to be as expensive as proof of work. It could be proof of bandwidth or other things like that. And given that it's decoupled, it can be uh, much cheaper. So we are continuing on this direction, looking at uh, smart contracts and uh, versions of payments that are more sophisticated, asset transfers that are more sophisticated, etc. This is on the research side, but 82 is also about to be deployed in the industry. We are collaborating with consortiums uh, in, in Europe and in the US and California who are very interested in, in using some of our protocols. Well, there are many criticisms of Bitcoin. Some people criticize um, the law of, of energy, which is uh, which is used by all the computers doing the mining to maintain the, the Bitcoin network. This is what we call proofs of bandwidth. Literally, I've been talking to you recently. Um, I will trust that you exist. You're not a fake identity if we recently exchanged data. 